Hello, Chris here, back with my Cubi 9, and I have good news. As you can see, it's running again. I managed to recover the BIOS and flash it with a USB programmer. It was a hell of a process, and I really honestly thought I could not recover from this. So whatever you do, just stay out of the BIOS. Don't go in the BIOS. There's no need to mess with any of those settings in there. I was only just looking for a way to update the BIOS. I thought I could go through the BIOS menu and I was wrong because it just wiped my bias. So just out of there. And many thanks to Woot Ever from XDA Forums with a tip that he gave me uh, to use the programmer, a way to use the programmer that actually worked out quite well for me. But it is still one of the hardest bias chips to be able to connect a test clip to to flash it over. I had a huge problem with that. Anyway, these now are the results that people want to see from my thermal mod, my simple, cheap, quick and easy thermal mod that I did which involves putting a 20 by 20 millimeter one millimeter thick copper plate on there a shim and what it does is improve thermals greatly it lowered temperatures on average about maximum temperatures about 20 degrees 23 degrees so now it is actually performing when it comes to some of the benchmarks I'm about to show you as good as a Surface Pro 4 M3 which is what I expected. I mean, it's got the same chipset, so you know, I think it was fair that I expected the same performance. I know that Microsoft has better design, of course. They have better tweaks and things, being their own tablet, being a Windows tablet, and they do have a huge uh, copper transfer plate in the Surface Pro 4, and they also have those heat transfer pipes. So here we go. That is the default score uh, when it came to the Ice Storm 1.2 score. It increased about 5,000 points. That is more or less what I got on the Surface Pro 4. Now, when it comes to pushing it even further, I just want to go and show you a couple of things that you can do. Now, only do this if you've done the thermal mod because it will give you that thermal headroom to allow you to actually push the power limit. What Cube have done, why it didn't perform as well as the the M3, the Surface Pro 3 M3, is uh, because of the power limits they had in place. So I have been running Intel XTU, which is their extreme tuning utility. And this is what I was running into. So you can see, hopefully you can see this on the camera right here, power limit throttling. What they had done is they set the Turbo Boost max power by default is at 7 watts. Now I think, I'm not sure, I can't remember anymore because I don't have... A Surface Pro M3, I've got an i5 one, but they set on their model, I think it's around 9 watts. So what I've done is just put that up to 10, it will probably, it will never reach 10 I think, uh, at least under the, the Turbo Boost Max power, and also increase the short power max. So that's allowing it to stretch its legs a little more, allowing it to use more power, and why Cube limited that is basically because they want to keep the temperatures from touching the uh, getting all close to the T-junction max which I think is 105 degrees and it gets up to about 88 so on Q's part the, what they did with the heatsink is quite poor really they should have put a copper plate in there and a huge thermal transfer pad and then everything will be fine everyone would be happy campers and we didn't have we don't have to mod this tablet so when I do the review I will be reviewing it as stock, not with the mods, of course. Now back to, sorry, to chip temperatures. I know I'm rambling on a little bit, but there's quite a bit of information I want to try and uh, give you guys because I think it's, it's helpful. So max temperature is now 65 degrees. That is with the stock uh, power limit in place, okay? When I increase the power limit, the temperature is going to increase, as you'll see shortly. But anyway, the improvement that I've got from just that thermal mod has now gone from 88 degrees max to 65, I think is brilliant considering the piece of copper that I used is literally, what well, I don't know, but like five, not even that, two or three dollars. Again, why Cube couldn't have done something like that? I don't know, it just beats me. Cast cutting, their engineers are following um, reference designs from Microsoft perhaps, I don't know. Anyway, I will now show you what you can do once you increase that power limit you'll see now the kind of scores you can get so the power limit has been increased and what that lets us do is push the graphics scores the only thing that has really changed there so if you have a look at my 
score there. The physics score is still the same, 25,000, 25,000, but the graphics score has gone from 47,000 now up to 61,000 because now it's allowing the power limit, the increased power limit is allowing the GPU now to use more wattage, and use more power to suck up more power. And there we go. So that's a result that is quite a good score, I think. It's not bad at all. So now with those, those changes there, uh, I will test out a quick game of Battlefield 4 and see just what kind of difference it's going to give us in terms of frame rate. Now if you've seen my Surface Pro M3 video, I got around 40 frames per second average or around 40 as the max. And when I tested it with the stock setup, I only got, what did I get? I think about 25 or something like that, maximum frames per second or 30, around 20 average, not really playable. So let's have a look now. Okay, so we're seeing 41 frames per second. Of course, I need to load in. Oh, up to 60 even. That is crazy. That's actually better than the surface, but I expect that to probably drop when it starts to heat up the tablet. 65. I must say that's impressive, but we haven't actually loaded all the textures in. Look how blurry that is. I guess when the textures load in, the frame, frame rate there will drop. Okay, did they load in properly? No. Okay, now they have loaded in. We're still 50 frames per second. Now it's dropped down to 38. Just doing the suicide run here. Alright, so we can see there that, I mean, I think this frame rate is definitely now better than the Surface Pro M3, which is quite good. Okay, I have tweaked this tablet, I have modified it. I mean, that is running quite good. So, let's have a look at those thermals here. I don't really want to be pushing the tablet too hard to risk getting far too hot and damaging something. So, back in now to HW Info, where are you? Okay, so 72 degrees, 74 on the GPU. You can see now with the power limit increased, it is definitely getting a lot hotter. So, only increase the power in Intel XTU um, if you've done the BIOS mod. Oh, sorry, not the BIOS mod, the thermal mod. Otherwise, you will damage your tablet. You'll probably reach 100 degrees if you increase that power limit, which is why Cube limited it. And really, that is all I can show you for now. So you can see that yeah, that simple little tweak that I've done and, and this here really has helped out. Thank you for watching this video. I will have more up and coming. And I just want to mention that when I do my review and I do a video review of this tablet, it will be just as it is as stock. Even though I've done the mod, all my benchmarks I will show will be the stock unmodified tablet. Hopefully catch you back in the channel. Bye for now.